Hey guys, Krishnam Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question one from the May 2018 POA paper two. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. Okay guys, so let's get into the solution. So let's take a look at this now. So let's take a read. So it says here up at the top, on 1 March 2018, Sanjeev, who is a sole proprietor, had 600 cash on hand and an overdraft of 400 at the bank. So we know what an overdraft is. That's when you spend more money than you have at the bank and you end up in a sort of a deficit. So the bank kind of lends you money to make your payments. So that's a liability. So Sanjeev reported the following transactions for the month of March 2018. So we have, interestingly, it says source document and then details, right? Of course, we have the dates across on that side. We'll get to those things. Now, but what I want to show you, let's, let's scroll down and see what they are asking us to do. So it says, using the form provided on page five, right? Record the transactions relevant to a three column cash book. Total and balance the cash book as at 31st March, 2018. Now that word relevant is going to come into play. So please pay attention. All right, so let's go back to the top. So on March, you know, first things first, let's get those opening balances going. So we have uh, cash on hand of $600. So cash is an asset. Assets usually have debit balances. So we're going to put that there. So you're going to see, right, 1st of March, balance brought down, cash 600. Now, there is an overdraft of 400 at the bank. So what that means is that that's going to be a credit balance brought down. Why? Again, because an overdraft is where you spend more money than you have in your bank account and your bank lends you the extra you need to make your payments. So you owe the bank money and liabilities have credit balances when they are brought down. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit and start taking a look at what's going on. So on the 1st of March, cash receipt for sale of old surveillance equipment, 1800. So we, spent, we, we, we got money, right? We sold some old surveillance equipment and we made a receipt out to somebody saying, hey, you paid us for this thing here and we received your money. Good. So that's a, that's a receipt. It's going to go on the debit side, right? So you're going to see it across there. It's going to say disposal of equipment, 1800. All right, next, on the 5th of March, we're seeing an invoice. Now, an invoice is for a credit sale or a credit purchase, neither of which is going to go in the cash book. So we could probably just even forget about that for now, right? We might probably come back to Let's just take a read. So it says, we received from DD Limited an invoice showing the value of goods bought for resale. So this means if we receive the invoice and it's goods bought, it's, we made a credit purchase. 7,500 less 25% trade discount. So if you guys watch my other playlists um, for the cash books, um, for the other pass paper questions, I would have said that trade discount is not recorded in the books, especially not the cash book, right? It's deducted on the invoice and the net figure is what is used for double entry, right? But again, this is a credit purchase that will go in the purchases journal, not in the cash book. So, Remember I said that word relevant would come into play? It, the word relevant would be relevant to what we were doing, right? That's why. Okay, next. Um, so yeah, we're not recording that transaction, but on the ninth, it says cash voucher, Sanjeev, the owner, withdrew $200 for his private use. So whenever the owner takes with well, resources or withdraws resources for his or her own personal use, that is referred to as drawings. That's a reduction in capital and capital reduces with a debit. Now, the resource that's coming out here is cash because it says cash voucher. So that tells us um, Sanjeev had to sign this thing called a cash voucher and take cash out of the business. So cash is an asset. It's decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. All right? So on the credit side, under the cash column, you're going to see 200. The details will say drawings. And of course, that's on the ninth. All right, next. Let's scroll up a little bit um, so we can see things clearly. So it says here, invoice. So again, an invoice is for a credit transaction. So this item is not going to be recorded in the cash book. Let's just take a read. So we, we sent an invoice to lay by stores for goods for resale. So we sold them goods on credit. $22.50 less, 20% trade discount. Again, trade discount is not recorded. It is calculated, deducted from, well, that $22.50. And the net figure, the figure after you minus your discount, that is what is used in your double entry bookkeeping or your journals. So that's irrelevant right now. Cash book wise, credit note. So a credit note, if we receive it, that means most likely we made a return outward. Um, when, when we receive a credit note, it's the creditor saying, hey, 
we um <clears throat> we have to credit your account. What is going on here is basically remember DD Limited from on top of here. So we bought some goods for them fr from them for that amount, but apparently some portion of those goods, right, which is eight hundred, it says, uh, were not according to requirements. So I mean, if it's not according to requirements, we're not going to keep the goods. We're going to send it back. So that's how it turns out. Okay. Um, now let's let's go down. So on the 16th, I'm seeing it says cash register totals report, right? End of day cash sales report, 3,680. So if this is the end of day cash sales, it means we got $3,680 into the cash book. And it says cash sales. So we're going to put a debit to cash because cash is increasing, right? If we made sales, money came in. If money came in, cash went up. So we're going to debit cash and the details will say sales and that's the 16th. All right, um, credit notes. So credit notes sent a credit note to lay by stores for goods damaged in transit. All right, 200 less 20% trade discount. Okay, right. So if we send a credit note, that's a returns in one. So we are crediting their account. All right, so again, this is a returns. This is not a cash transaction. So it's not going to affect the cash book right now. Uh, next, paying and slip counter foil. Okay, the counter foil uh, is a little stub. So there's this thing called a, called a deposit slip and on it you write your information regarding the amount of money you're putting in and they tear it out of the book. Now that, that, that's how it used to be. I don't know if that is still in the values, maybe not in Trinidad, maybe in other, other countries. I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong, right? But long story short, when you make a deposit, you have a little slip of paper that tells you how much you put in on what date, at least those two things. And it says that we banked 5,000 of the cash on hand. So that means that we put money into the bank. So the, the bank is increasing, but we had to take cash. So cash is decreasing. This is a contra entry. It's affecting both cash and bank simultaneously in the same transaction. So one is increasing, bank in this case, because we're putting money into bank, and cash is decreasing. So let's let's take a look and see. So let's let's enter this one first, which is the credit to cash. So cash is decreasing. Cash is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. So under the cash. On the credit side, under the cash column, you're going to put the 5,000. You're going to put a C in the folio column to, to show it's a, credit, it's a contra entry. And you're going to put bank. That's where the money went. Now, on the debit side, remember, bank is increasing. So there's going to be a debit, right? On the debit side, on, under the bank column, you're going to see the same 5,000. C for contra entry. And it came from cash. So the money here came from here. All right. Uh, next, it says um, check stub uh, for payment to Jeff's Aircon Incorporated in settlement of an account of 7,500 less 5% cash discount. So the check stub, when you write a check and you write a checkbook, there's a little piece left over called a stub, right? So that's what I thought it was, was, the, was the counter foil, <laughs> but clearly I have to um, recheck my definitions. Okay, so long story short, you paid somebody with a check, so it means your money is decreasing. So you're going to have to credit. So you're going to credit bank. Um, how much? Now, it's 7,500. That's the, that's, the, that's the account amount. But less 5% cash discount. Cash discount is recorded. So if we make a payment and somebody gives us discount, that's a discount received. So guess what? That's going to go under the discount received column. But how much? Well, it's 5% of the 7,500. And we have to minus that figure from the 7,500. So this is what it would look like, right? So 5% of 7,500 is 375. When you take 375 away from 7,500, you get 7,125, right? And when you add back these two figures, you're going to get back 7,500, right? Jeff's Aircon Incorporated, 26th of March, right? Next, um, paying in slip counter foil. It says for check received from lay-by stores in settlement of their account to date. Less a cash discount of $150. Okay, okay. So this is lay by stores. This was a, a transaction. We have two things to do with lay by stores. Ooh, okay, okay. So check what happened. Let, let, let's just check the history of this of this sort of stuff, right? So on the all right, so the 13th is the first day where we sent an invoice to lay by stores for goods for resale, 2250, less 20% trade discount. So I actually have a little workout of um, the figures here. 
So a calculation of amount of credit sale after discount, right? So first of all, the, the amount of the credit sale before the discount was twenty-two fifty. Sorry, one second, eh? Um, right, twenty-two fifty, and the discount is twenty percent, right? So we find twenty percent of twenty-two fifty, which is four fifty, and we're going to subtract it. So it means that the value of the sale, the credit sale, that would have, would have been recorded is eighteen hundred. So that's how much they owe us right now. Well, from that the initial credit sale. Uh, then on the, the 19th, we sent a credit note to lay-by stores for goods damaged in transit, 200 less 20%. So the $200 was the amount pre-discount and the 20% was the discount. So the, the value of the, um, this here, right, so the 200 is pre-discount and we take away 20%, which is 40 and we get 160. Right, so on the... Sorry, something is beeping in the corner, right? So on the, on the final transaction with them, we're gonna see, right, so it's for, for check received from Levi's stores in settlement of their account, less a cash discount of 150. So they paid off how much ever they owed. Let's figure that out first, right? So they started off by owing 1,800, they returned 160. So we're gonna, oops, come back down, right? So we're going to go there. So 18, so 1640, that's the amount owed before the returns. Uh, is it? Is it? I, thought it? I thought it was 1800. No, I feel like it's 1800. Right? 1800. Right? The returns is 160. So the amount, right? The net amount owed is 1640. Right? So this was the initial amount of the credit sale. This was the amount returned. So therefore, this is what they, they owe. And we still have to take out the 150 cash discount. So we're going to receive, whoa, definitely not 34.50. Wow. Oh, oh, that's why, right? The formula. So 14.90. <laughs> maybe I should start checking these files before I use them on a live video. Maybe, just maybe. <laughs> right. Okay. So 14.90 is the amount that we're going to receive from um, via check, and 150 is the discount. All right. So that's on the debit side, I believe. Right. So see, lay by stores. Right? We're debiting because the asset of bank is increasing. Um, and of course, it's discount allowed. Okay. All right. So that was the last transaction. So now it's time to balance off. Now, the discount allowed and discount received columns, these columns are simply totaled. Right? They are not balanced off against each other. Now, cash-wise, I'm seeing, what's that, 24? There's about 6,080 on this side. And this is 5,200. So cash is definitely going to have... Um, a balance brought down, sorry, carried down from the, the credit side and ultimately brought down on the debit side, 880. Uh, bank, but bank, I'm seeing about 7,500 on this side and only 6,490 on that side. So bank is still in overdraft, right? 1035, and that's going to be brought down on this side. And don't forget, we're going to put our totals, right? Okay, right, so that's the cash book. Now, we have a couple extra things to do in this question, so let's, let's get cracking on that. Right, it says, it's asking here, what is the significance of the balance brought down in bank account, in the bank account, sorry, at 31st March 2018? I was just a mark for that. Because, as we know, it's still brought down on the credit side, which means that it is an overdraft. Right, the balance is an overdraft. <laughs> Long story short. Okay, now we're not done, and we have another thing to do here. So, based on the relevant transactions data for the month of March, prepare DD Limited's account and show clearly any balance outstanding at the end of March 2018. So, if you remember, we there were a few transactions with with DD, and those transactions were credit sales, a return, and something else, uh, a payment, right? And and what we need to do is we need to show DD Limited's account. Now, if you're buying on credit from somebody, that's, that person's a creditor, all right? Um, so they, they give us a, a, a basic T account format here. As you can see, it's five marks. So I'm, I'm just gonna go back up to that page with the transactions. Um, we're gonna go through those transactions one by one. So let me open up my solution for DD, right? So DD Limited, creditor's account, okay. So first thing is we have this invoice. So that's a credit purchase. And that's going to go on the credit side because when you buy on credit, you, you take goods without paying for them, but you're promising to pay them in the future. So you now owe somebody money. That is a liability. 
So that's 7,500 less 25% trade discount. So again, trade discount is not recorded, right? So you're just gonna find 25% of 7,500 and subtract it. So that's gonna go on the credit side. So purchases, 5,625, because that's the credit purchase amount. Uh, next, the credit note. So the credit note, that's the, that's the return, right? So it's 800 less 25% trade discount. That's gonna give us 600. It goes on the opposite side. All right, and was there anything else with DD? No, there was nothing else with DD limited. So therefore, we're gonna have a balance carried on from that side, and our totals will look like that. And if you want, you could bring your balance down on the credit side, 5,025. So that's basically it. All right, so ladies and gents, that's it for question one from May 2018. Again, if you wanna see any, well, more playlists with solutions, I'm gonna put some more solutions up on that side there. And I'm gonna put links to my website and to subscribe, please subscribe. And don't forget the website has free payway handouts. Anyhow, ladies and gents, any questions, put them in the comment section below. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.